Hey everyone, welcome back. Today on this last video of 2023, I want to talk to you about something called the planet fitness problem. And no, before you ask, this has nothing to do with a problem about the gym Planet Fitness, but rather it's a mathematical problem that I, as a gym goer of Planet Fitness, started thinking about and, and really couldn't stop thinking about. So I wanted to share it with all of you. And this comes in Planet Fitness, but really any gym, which has something called a crowd meter. The crowd meter basically lets me know how busy the gym is at any given time in real time, but furthermore also gives me this distribution of the most popular and least popular times that people are visiting the gym, so I can plan in advance if that's something that's important to me. Now this is great to know, but it also leads to a very interesting mathematical dynamical system that I really wouldn't have expected at first. And to understand what we're talking about, let's put ourselves in the shoes of an average gym goer. So this is you, and I think I've drawn it accurately because that's the face I'm making before I am going to the gym. And let's say, just to simplify things for a moment, that people either go to the gym in the morning or at night. So there's just two states to our world. Of course, people go at all hours of the day, and we'll get to that in a second. But let's say that we look at our distribution of how often people are going to the gym at different times of day, and we find that 70% of people go to the gym in the morning, and 30% of people go to the gym at night. Now. That's great, but what is more interesting is when the observing of a distribution, when I observe this distribution which is publicly available to me and also everybody else, when the act of observing that distribution has the power to change that distribution itself at one time period in the future. And the mechanism by which that happens is I'll say, you know what, I want to go to the gym when it's less crowded because I want to make sure I find parking, I don't want to get intimidated by all the people at the gym, I want to make sure I can use the machines that I want to use. And so I'll be deciding to go to the gym at the time when the least amount of people are there, at night, because in the morning it's really crowded. If you think about it though, I'm not the only one doing this calculus. Many other gym goers, not all of them, and we'll get to that nuance in the video, but many other gym goers are going through the same calculus in their heads. They're saying, I'm gonna go at night, there's less people, I'm flexible, that'll be fine for me. But what that means, what that means is that if this was the distribution on day t minus 1, then on the next day, day t, or the next week, or the next month, or however long it takes for this to adjust, the distribution is going to shift so that the previously popular times are becoming less popular, and the previously unpopular times are becoming more popular. And although I've only drawn one time step here, you can imagine this just continues. We still have an imbalance here, so maybe more people from the morning have shifted to go at night, and then more people from the morning have shifted to go at night, and so on and so on and so on. And it's kind of interesting to think about where does this all lead in the long run? What is the stable state of such a system? And now to zoom out to the real problem we're looking at is people go to the gym at all times of the day. So let's say this is a distribution that I'm actually looking at on this Planet Fitness app. So there's midnight when very few people go, there's very late at night when very few people go, but there's also peak times, like right before work or right after work, you have a lot of people going to the gym. And the question, the thought exercise, the really interesting dynamics we're gonna be talking about in this video is, will observing this distribution change the distribution itself? And so this idea just kind of blew my mind. I don't know if it's doing the same for you, but it's just the fact that this distribution is publicly available to everyone who goes to the gym. But you have to believe that looking at that distribution and changing your own behavior is going to shift that distribution in the future because you yourself are one data point in this distribution and everyone is a data point in this distribution. So how are we going to model this dynamical system? We're actually going to do it pretty easily and it's going to fall back on our knowledge about Markov chain. And the first thing we're going to say is just because you're doing this logic in your head doesn't mean everyone's doing it. Some people uh, can't change when they go to the gym, they have to go to work at a certain time, or they really, really prefer to go at a certain time and don't care so much about how many other people are there. So we're going to start with a probability that you would just keep the time that you already want to go to the gym. So that probability of not changing your time is going to be called P stay. The probability that you would just stick with whatever time you're currently going to the gym. If that's like 90%, then most people are happy going when they actually want to go. If that probability is like 10%, then most people are very flexible and will let the distribution influence them to go at less popular times. Now let's say that you are someone who's going to get influenced by the distribution. So if you do decide to change the time you're going to go between time period t minus 1 and time period t, then we're going to define this set of transition probabilities of going from the current time you go to the gym to the new time you go to the gym as this slightly scary looking formula, which is e to the power of negative the current probability 
of the number of people going at the new time divided by the sum over all probabilities of e to the negative p sub i of all the different times people are currently going to the gym. And crucially, we don't include the current time in this sum down here because you have decided to change if you're in this step two. If you have not decided to change, then you're just gonna stay at the time you're going anyway. Now, just to shed a little bit of light on what is going on here, why does it look like that? In case this seems confusing, I would relate this back to the form of the softmax in data science. The softmax, most easily explained, is a way to take a bunch of numbers, here are their probabilities, and normalize them all to sum up to one. So basically what we're doing here is the same thing. We're saying that you have decided to go from the current time you're going to the gym and pick a new time, but we want you to prioritize times which are less popular. And that's exactly what this negative sign on the probabilities is doing. The more popular a time is, the less likely you are going to be to transition to that time. For example, looking at this histogram, you're probably not going to transition to going at 9 a.m. because that's really popular. You might, however, decide to transition to going at 8 p.m. because that's a lot less popular. And the other thing, as we said, is we wanna make sure that your probability of transitioning to all these different possible states, all these different possible times of day, need to add up to one because that itself needs to be a probability distribution. And that's what this form is doing, the same function as the softmax in other data science applications. So now that we understand the dynamics of the math, let's do the fun part and actually look at how this system is going to work between one day and the next. So let's say the probability that you would stick with your current time is 80%. So 20% of people are open to changing the time they're gonna to go to the gym based on the distribution they see. And 80% of people are saying, you know what, I'm just going to stick with whatever time I'm going at for whatever reason. So on day zero, we're gonna say that the probability that someone would go in the morning is going to be 70%. The probability someone would go in the afternoon is going to be 20%. And the probability that someone would go at night is going to be 10%. So we've kind of simplified our world again just to understand how this kind of system would evolve between one day and the next. So we have three different times you can go. And the zero subscript is saying these are the probability distributions of people going to the gym on day zero. So now we get to the fun part where we actually get to use these math that we had developed on the previous page and come up with the transition probabilities of going from any three of these states to any other three of these states. And let's work this math out for the probability of going from the morning to any other time on the next day. And you'll see that all the other transition probabilities can be worked out in a very similar way. So what's the probability of going in the morning on day zero to sticking with going on the morning on day one. Well, this is the easiest one to work out because that's literally the definition of the probability of stay or sticking with your current time. So that's gonna be just 80%. Now, what's the probability of going on the morning on day zero, but then transitioning to going in the afternoon on day one? Before we even work it out, what do we kind of expect about that relative to the next probability we're gonna work out, which is the probability of going in the morning on day zero to going at night on day one? Well, we know that night is a less popular time than afternoon. We would expect that the transition of people going from morning to nighttime to be more, to have a higher probability than the transition probability of people going from morning to afternoon because night is a less busy time. So let's work out the math. This is just plugging stuff into the formula from the previous page. And we find that the probability of going from morning to going in afternoon is about 9.5%. And the probability of going in the morning to going at night is going to be 10.5%. So our logic checks out. This is all sane and it makes sense. We can also capture all of these transition probabilities in this Markov chain right here. So here we have three states. It's going to be going in the morning, going to the gym in the afternoon, going to the gym at night. And these transition probabilities, all nine of these arrows are telling us about what's the probability that if someone was at any of these three states, they would be at any other of these three states on the following day. So this is exactly the Markov chain. This is exactly telling us the entire story of transitions between day zero and day one. And the really, really cool thing about this problem, aside from just being a kind of interesting thing that's going on in the real world that's mathematically related, is that it's an example of where a Markov chain can change over time. Typically, when we think about Markov chains, we think about it as the transition probabilities are fixed, and we're just trying to figure out what the stable state would be given a fixed set of transition probabilities, given a fixed transition matrix. But as we'll see, this is actually one step further. This is a type of problem where we're going to need a Markov chain which is time dependent. A Markov chain whose transition probabilities themselves are going to change between one day and the next and the next. 
And that's exactly what we're going to be looking at next. And so to start our story there, let's look at what the probabilities look like on day one. So we knew that it was 70%, 20%, and 10% for morning, afternoon, and night respectively on day zero. But after one day has gone by and we've let all these transitions take their place, what are the new probabilities of going to the gym on day one at any of these three times? Well, we can work out the math and we find that the probability on day one of the fraction of people going in the morning is lower. It's 58%, which makes intuitive sense because people have transitioned away from that very popular period. The probability of people going in the afternoon is 24%, which is higher than it was before. And the probability of people going at night is 18%, which is also higher than it was before. And notably, that got the biggest jump upwards because it was the least popular time. So the interesting thing is, after one day, the ranking has stayed the same. It's still the morning is the most popular, then the afternoon, then night. And that's the same that's true here. But all these probabilities have moved closer together. The difference between them is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And so to hit home that point that solving this problem is going to require us to think about Markov chains changing over time, we're going to be looking at what the Markov chain looks like of going from day one to day two. And quick mental check, why should it look different than the Markov chain going from day zero to day one? Because the Markov chain's probabilities themselves are based on the probability of people being at each state on a given day. And the probability of people being at a given state on any given day, as we saw, is something that is changing over time, is definitely something that is varying. So that kind of begs the question, what, what is the stable state? If we just let this process continue indefinitely, 365 days, two years, five years, if we just let this kind of continue on in the future, what is going to be the stable state of people being at any state on any given time of day? And so to understand that, we can actually understand it very intuitively. We don't even need to fall back on math here because we can say that any distribution where one probability, where going at a certain time of day is higher than another, cannot be the stable state, cannot be the stable state. And the reason for that is basically if there is a time when people are going very often, so let's say people are going really often at this time of day and not very often at this time of day, then by the way we've designed our transition probabilities, people are going to be choosing to go from this time to this other time. And so any distribution where there is some imbalance, where there is a mismatch between the times of day people are going, cannot be the stable state. That means the only stable state, the only possible stable state, is when all times of day have an equal probability of people going to them. And so that distribution would look like this. No matter if we're talking about midnight, no matter if we're talking about 11 p.m., no matter what time of day you're talking about, the distribution is going to be flat. That is the only possible stable state with the dynamical system that we have laid out. And so in this animation, we can actually see the effect, the distribution changing over the course of several days under these dynamics that we just laid out. And here we can see the effect of the probability of staying. We see that the more likely people are to already stick to when they're going, the slower and slower this distribution converges to flat, but it will always converge to flat. The more likely people are to change their behavior, the quicker it converges to flat. But again, no matter what, as long as the probability of staying is less than 100%, it's always going to converge to this flat distribution. Now, that makes sense given the system we laid out, but something feels wrong about that, right? But this is not right. Because if you go to any real gym, you don't see the same amount of people there at any given time. You definitely do see that people are more popularly going before work or after work. So it seems our system needs a little bit of modification. And that's what we're gonna do to round out this video. We're going to modify the step two before to looking just a little bit different. The probability, the transition probability of going from your current time to picking a new time to go is now going to be dependent on not just the current probabilities, not just the current probabilities of when people are going to the gym at different times, but also these probabilities where P prime I is the ideal probability to visit at time I. And what that means is that if there was nobody else going to the gym, if you could have your ideal case and you could go and you would get parking and you could use whatever machine you wanted, there's no crowd, then what time would you go? That's going to be what's encoded by these P prime probabilities. And by writing our transition probabilities to explicitly include these primes, what we're doing is we are rewarding transitions to places that have fewer people at them right now, 
but also where people would ideally like to go. So to concretely talk about that, let's consider the 7 a.m. time, a very popular time to go to the gym. Transitioning to that time is going to be punished because it's a very popular time. That's this term right here. But it's also going to be rewarded because that's when people actually want to go. And the big question now is, of course, where does that leave the stable state? What does the stable state look like if we change our step two to look like this and have that behavior? Well, let's actually look at a couple of simulations, look at a couple of evolving distributions over time to answer that question. And so in this animation, we see the effect of this very simple change to our transition probabilities, where we're rewarding people transitioning to less popular times, but also times that they probably wanted to go anyways in an ideal world. And we see that we are no longer converging to flat as we were before. Instead, we're converging to something, something that is between flat and the ideal distribution that people would have wanted to go. And so we actually find really, really interestingly that if this is the modification we make to our system, then the stable state is going to be between the ideal, when people would ideally go if no one else was going to the gym, and the flat distribution, which was what we got before. It's some kind of hybrid. And so that is probably what we're seeing in the real world, is that the distribution of people going to the gym specifically for gyms where you can see the distribution on some app or the website, is something between the ideal time you'd wanna to go to the gym and just people going to the gym at the same exact rate at all times of day. And I find that extremely fascinating that that is a dynamical system going on in the real world right under our noses. So thanks so much for this year, folks. Thanks for watching all the videos. Any ideas for future videos are definitely welcome below and I'll catch you all next time.